first plant. <laughs> wow. That's different. I really like that. Peshods or Pichods or <laughs> Yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> Howdy, howdy, howdy. It is uh, Wednesday, and may the 4th be with you. Uh, some things you may not know about old KC here is that I am a bit of a Star Wars fan, a bit of a geek. Uh, Kevin's with us. Tyler's with Hey, Tyler, how are you, man? Another uh, person I converted into alcoholism. <laughs> well, in South Carolina a couple of years ago. Anyway, if you don't know me all the way, you, know, you don't know that I'm a, a Star Wars geek. Now, I like Star Trek. Better than Star Wars in certain ways, but I like Star Wars better than Star Trek in certain ways. Uh, so I, I brought out kind of the menagerie, rebel scum, right? <laughs> uh, I've even got salt and pepper shakers. Uh, I've got an R2-D2 Pez. <laughs> and they're all in their original packaging because, you know, you collect stuff and you never know if somebody's going to want to buy it. Like this is, this is a plush. I never even took the tag off. Plush Darth Vader. They used to make noise. Use it. You know, used to do that, doesn't do that anymore. R2D2 still has a little juice in him. Not a lot. There's a little bit there. And there's Yoda. Yeah, he's got nothing. <laughs> and Chewbacca evidently had a child. Or this is a clone. I don't know. And then um well, there was a little bit of a roar there. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, Big Chewy, who I got for Christmas. He even has his little saddlebag here, and, it's, and it opens. It's got a little thing. I could put booze in there, a little flask, carry it on a plane. <laughs> little little store. I was in Hawaii. We were on a tour, and the tour guide, uh, I, we sat up front, like you would guess. And the tour guide, we had, we had gone to a luau, Jermaine's luau, best luau on Oahu. If you ever go to Oahu, you've got to go to Jermaine's Luau. It's really fantastic. Anyway, so they were doing crowd participation, and they were doing um, Old MacDonald Howe Farm. And the guy was a stand-up comedian. He's also a sword fisherman. It's a really cool, neat, cool, cool guy. He's never been out of Hawaii. He's been to the different islands, but he's never been out of the state. Well, he's going, on this farm, he had a, and he pointed to me and went, Wookie! And I went, and the whole bus erupted. It was pretty funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mark is watching. Hey, Mark. How are you, man? Okay, so this is the rebel scum that we are dealing with. I'm not going to call it rebel scum because I haven't tried it yet. I wasn't able to find out a lot of information on this. So some of the people are, um, they are reviewing the Distiller's Select, which is similar looks to it. This is the cask strength version of Rebel. It is a Luxco product, which is now owned by uh, MGP. Uh, however, it's rumored that the whiskey, even though MGP is a major producer of whiskeys and ryes, that they then source out to somebody else, the rumor is that MGP is not the distiller of this particular juice, that it happens to be Heaven Hill, which begs the question, is it similar to this cask strength? Because that's Heaven Hill. So we're going to try this. I might put it up to the test of this. And then, of course, we're going to do water and we're going to do uh, ice as well. And then we're going to talk about what we're doing tomorrow for Cinco de Mayo. All right. Let's get this underway. You know, I, I did the terrible thing. I didn't open it ahead of time. I've had this a little while. My eyes. I can see the shiny thing. <laughs> Okay, so I've had this for a little while. This one is a, it was filled in 2016 at the party source. These age between, uh, I think, six and eight years is what I saw. They are weeded, so they don't have rye, in, or at least not much. I was not able to find an actual mash bill for it, and I looked. 
I looked at it. Um, it's just a single barrel, cask strength. Um, it's a Cinco de Drinco. That's tomorrow. <laughs> That's tomorrow. This is May the 4th be with you, Tyler. <laughs> but thank you for being here. Cinco de Drinco, Cinco de Mayo. Uh, tomorrow is going to be uh, kind of a bigger thing than it is today, um, in a way. Because not only am I going to be um, putting out the drink for tomorrow, but we're also going to be putting out a recipe. It's the meal that I'm making tomorrow night in celebration of Cinco de Mayo. It's a little spicy, not real bad, but um, because it's a Mexican dish, it may interfere with some tasting if you want to do it later. So uh, you may want to eat early and drink much water and then do your tasting for tomorrow night. We're going to do some tequila. I'll get into that. I'll get into that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo is always fun. And in the past, what I've done is I've done um, margaritas. But I've done the same margarita recipe now several times. So we're going to do some stuff that... I, I, here I am getting ahead of myself again. We're going to do some stuff that ha does nothing to do with margaritas. We're going to do like antaritas. <laughs> I've got a couple of drinks we're going to be doing. It'll be fun. Okay. All right. So this is the Cask Strength Rebel. Party source pick. It's going to be different than other ones just off the shelf, but uh, it's a single barrel. Mm, I think it is. It might be a blend. No, single barrel. Yep. So, okay. Nice. I know. What's that mean? <laughs> nice. <laughs> like the shirt? The guy who was with us and his wife, uh, who was with us when we did uh, the Angel's Envy uh, Barrel Strength, Jeff and his wife, Brooke, they're... Okay, so it's Brooke's sister made this shirt for me. And... It says, I find your lack of bourbon disturbing. So I thought that was pretty clever. And so thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. And Courtney and Jeremy. Okay. All right. There's definitely some ethanol on the nose, but it's not unpleasant. Like other ethanols that I've had on the nose, it's not unpleasant at all. Getting pepper and cinnamon. Those are the two spices that are just punching me. In the schnoz. <laughs> no problem, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> All right. Hey, Chris is watching. Hi, Chris. How are you, man? May the fourth be with you. <laughs> There's something um, citrusy. I want to say it's lemon peel. It's nice. I didn't get any notes on this. I couldn't find it anywhere. I mean, there was not a lot of information about this bottle online. I went to the heaven. I went to Lux Coast page. I went to their direct page. Um, just isn't much there. All right. This is one of those that kicks you after you swallow it. This one is 120 proof. 120 proof. Similar to other blooms that I've had just recently, the bloom is kind of back here in the back of the tongue. The bloom, for those of you who are new to the program, I, I call the burn the bloom. It's a, it's a coffee term. Um... It starts sometimes in the center of your tongue and blooms its way out across the sides of your tongue. This one's more in the back and kind of stationary. Um, it's, um, it does not drink like 120 proof. There are some, like the Four Roses Single Barrel Select. No. Small Batch Select. Uh, Four Roses Small Batch Select. To me, that drank hotter than this, and it wasn't near the proof. 
113 is kicking you too. Uh, Kevin's got the Distillers Select. It's 113 proof. This is 120. A little different bottle. I saw more online about the Distillers Select than I did about the cask strength. I didn't spend a, a lot of time. Boy, do we have a couple days. Uh, if you're not from the area that I'm from, uh, yesterday we had a little bit of a scare. We had a tornado. Uh, started off with a warning, and then sure enough, they found a funnel cloud south of town, and uh, it evidently touched down. It was down for about seven miles and was about 25 yards wide, which 75 feet, that's significant. That, that'll, that'll knock your barn down, you know? So that happened yesterday. Then today, an edit that I've been working on disappeared. Two days of work. So I put on the boxing gloves and hit the bag for a little bit, trying to get that one out of my system. That hurt. All right. There's some apple. Definitely apple. Cinnamon, vanilla. Uh, vanilla. Um, but the apple's really what's hitting me on this one. Um, pepper is still there. I will tell you, I don't think it's the same pour as this. When I drank this, I was, wow. Um, this is not wowing me. It doesn't have that huge burst of flavors that this one had, but I am going to go back to back on it. I'm going to wait until I'm done. Um, and I don't remember apple being present on that one. So, let's do it again here. I just want to make sure I'm right. I am. It's just, you know, everybody's palate is different. You may catch apple, you may catch something else. Um, this is one of those pours that dried out my mouth. Not terribly, but it, it definitely dried out my mouth a little bit. 120 proof. Not all high proofers do that to me, but this one did. And it wasn't bad. It didn't, like... <laughs> suck all the water out of my body or anything. Mm. The legs are just holding onto that glass. Apple came out, but I also got a hint of black licorice and green olive. Now, if you don't like black licorice or green olives... I don't either, but in this, it's just an interesting note. Um, I don't find myself going, Gah. but um, just an interesting note. I, I'm detecting some of that a little bit. Okay, one more. Incidentally, that's a shower curtain. <laughs> we have a Star Wars bathroom in the house, and uh, it's all decked out. It's got uh, blueprints of X-Wing fighters and the Millennium Falcon and TIE fighters and all that stuff, and we've got towels that say, I love you, I know, uh, from uh, Empire Strikes Back. Um, we've got a trash can that says, uh, uh, what was it, the garbage recycle, what was the thing that, th that they dove into, the garbage disposal thingy, whatever, anyway. It says that on the side of the trash can, and, and there's an R2-D2 up there, and there's a Darth Vader bobblehead, and um, there's a soap dispenser that says Han Sopo. <laughs> we have a Star Wars bathroom, so that's the, that's the uh, shower curtain from the bathroom. Luckily, my son isn't here and doesn't need to take a shower right this instant, so he's not going to come home and go, Hey! <laughs> what happened? Oh, uh, Let's, okay, I'm befuddled, I'm befuddled. All right, here we go. Uh, where's my brain? Where's my brain? I don't know, it's 120 proof. What are you expecting? Uh, <laughs> all right, let's add a little water to it. See if this opens it up a little bit. This house speaks geek and nerd and dork. human cyborg relations. <laughs> I can act as an interpreter. 
When I was growing up and seeing Star Wars in the theaters, C-3PO was one of my least favorite characters. I can't say that he's still a, a character I love today. And the new Mandalorian show with Baby Yoda, oh, I've had enough of that. <laughs> I, mean, I think one of the things I dislike about Star Wars in its entire galaxy is all of the, I mean, I'm, I'm a victim of it, all the merchandising, right? The Baby Yoda toy, everybody's buying the Baby Yoda toy for Christmas like a year ago or two years ago. Yeah, he's cute. He's supposed to be cute. That way you buy him. He annoys me. And he's got a stupid name. Grogu? Pfft. All right. Still up there. Brought down some of that burn, but not a lot. Um, definitely changed the notes a little bit. Um... Brought out more of the pepper. Um, gosh, what is it? Molasses. Again, this is a weeded bourbon. So the, there's not a lot of rye in it, if there's any at all. It's going to have corn, uh, weeded uh, wheat, weeded wheat, and um, malted barley. Um, yeah, the molasses came out. The apple's still there, too. There's some notes I'm not catching. I'm not getting caramels. I'm not getting honeys. I'm not getting toffees. I'm not getting chocolate. Um, apple, pepper, licorice, olive. Um, yeah. So um, it didn't really open up a lot. I didn't add a lot of water to it. I don't think it needed it. Um, but it 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 was good. I mean, the really the only thing it brought out is. Um, that other note, which I can't remember what I said. <laughs> All right. An ice sphere. Don't know what that was. <laughs> Don't know what that was. All right. I can feel it affecting me already. So I'm not going to let myself go too crazy because I want to be able to contrast this one and the Larceny Barrel Proof. This is B521 uh, B or, yeah, B521. And it's 121 proof. So it's just barely over this one. 0.5%. A lot of uh, cinnamon like red hearts. Um, I was not getting the red hearts or red hots or whatever. I was not getting cinnamon that way. I was getting more of a, the peppery side of it. Um, cinnamon, cinnamon can be an intense spice if, if, if you use too much of it or you put it directly on your tongue. There was like a challenge among kids doing stupid things, and cinnamon was actually hurting kids. Um, but it can be a very intense spice if, if not used in moderation. Um, so I'm not getting the, the candy-ish side of the Red Hots on mine. Again, mine is a single barrel select. It's not a blend. This is from the party source. It is their cask. So I could buy one of these, and we found this out with the Angel's Envy stuff. I could buy one of these from another store, maybe up in Lambertville, go to Flix and buy one of these in Lambertville or somewhere, and, and it's going to be completely different. So this is just what I'm getting off of this one. Tell us how you really feel. The 120 is kicking in. Yeah? Yeah, Michael? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm starting to feel this one. <laughs> if we get through this without me slurring, I'm going to be a happy camper. <laughs> Whew. Now I'm starting to get some more notes out of it. Um, this is bringing me a lot more vanilla.
Still a lot of the other stuff, too. There's something else. Some of that citrus is coming back through. I didn't get it neat, and I didn't get it with water. I had it on the nose, but I didn't get it on the, on the palate, and I'm getting it now, now that I put ice on it. Only in the palate, it's not lemon, it's grapefruit. Huh. Okay. Um, I won't say this is my favorite pour. I don't dislike it. Um, I think this, for me, would probably be more of a mixer. Um, unless I was just wanting to entertain people and give them a, a high-proof option. Um, this is not what I'm going to go through. Um, the larceny, I've had trouble staying out of this one. I really like this a lot. Um, so I am going to put them back to back as soon as I finish this. Yeah. Okay, I haven't missed anything. Um, the photo, I didn't take a photo, but I did a, uh, rendering. <laughs> I can't claim credit for the photos, but I can claim credit for the, uh, for the, uh, the editing there. So I just thought I'd... Bring it back to that, since Beautiful Bourbon is all about the photos. And while it's cold, I really suck at going outside getting photos. All right. I only brought down the one Glen Cairn. I've still got some in there, so we're just going to pour a little bit more. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's just a little bit, a yittle, yittle bit. I just want a taste of it so I can back it up with the larceny and see. There was an, uh, an article that came out. I don't remember the name of the website now. One of those clickbait websites. And they were talking about the worst bourbons of... Well, I don't think there was a qualifier. Just the worst bourbons. And on that list was Larceny Barrel Proof. That told me that that person probably had never tried it, that they were dealing from aggregated data that they got somewhere else. Because right after that was another list of the best bourbons to try in 2022. <laughs> and that was on it. <laughs> Same website. There was a next article. It said, read the next article. And there it was. I don't think they actually taste anything. It's, I think it's all aggregated data that they get. All right. So here's the uh, Rebel. That neat just dries my mouth out. Not my favorite on this, Kevin says. I'll save a dram for you to compare, but it's not mellow corn. <laughs> for those of you new to the program, you'll know that Kevin hates mellow corn, and I don't mind it. I found it drinkable. Uh, I rather enjoyed it for what it is. Kevin hated it. Gave me his bottle. I finished it. <laughs> so... I'm not going to say it's one of my favorite either. Could we call it Rebel Scum? Yeah, we could call it Rebel Scum. Um, but, you know, it, it follows that line of the Rebel products. The Rebel 100 that I had, which is one of the very first verb casts I ever did, it was good, but it wasn't, no, oh, this is fantastic, you should buy it right now. No, it isn't. Um, it's good. It's good for what it is. Um, it's good for what it is. Michael David's talking. Two 120 plus back to back. Is there a chance we'll hear the infamous I'm plowed again? <laughs> yes, there is a chance you're going to hear that, but I don't think so. We will see. 120, 121. And this is my fourth pour. Fifth pour. Revenge of the fifth. See, that should be tomorrow. 
Revenge of the Fifth. With a fifth. The challenge is to drink the whole thing in the whole day. Not all at once. The whole day. But instead, they appropriated it and made it Cinco de Drinco. Cinco de Mayo. Made me want to eat things. <laughs> All right, so. Mm-hmm. 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 Not the same. Much more mellow. Much more flavor. Lighter. Less icky. <laughs> this has just got a lot more going on. Um, even though it's a higher proof, it's a mellow or poor. Uh, there's some similarities, but they are few. I think my taster's burned off, so to tell you def uh, definitive notes, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. Okay? I'll try. <laughs> Somebody's talking. Kevin's talking. We've been drinking. Yes. I was supposed to go fishing today, but after losing two days of work on my edit, gorgeous day. I could have caught a limit. I did really well on, was it Monday night? Yeah. Best I ever, get, I did, I ever did. I brought in five monster crappies and one fat bluegill. All from one little tiny tiny reed stash. The reeds are growing. It's the only place on the entire lake where something is growing and that's where I found all my crappie. And they were fat hogs. Turning into a fisherman now that I know how to do it. <laughs> okay. I'm sweating. I am so sweating. Okay. See, to me, that's just a softer pour. It's got a, it's got a different, more silky viscosity that comes to, into your palate. This is more harsh. This is more silky, even though it's a higher proof. I'm getting no burn off of this one. Now, I've had a little bit, so that ethanol burn may be going away. I'm going to go back to this one and do another pour. They are not the same. That's in a much higher league than this one. <laughs> I know there's a hole for the cork. I can't find it. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, I've gone too long. I'm sorry. We'll do this and then we'll recap what's going on tomorrow. <laughs> All right. I'm sweating. Goodness gracious. Is another tornado about to hit? Because <laughs> that's what it was like yesterday. I walked outside, it was like so humid. It was only 71, but it was like, bleh. you could almost feel like you were walking through a shower or something. And right now I feel that down here with my shower curtain. All right. Mm -mm. No, much more harsh. Um, I'm still feeling the bloom on this one. Larceny, I did not. It's a higher proof, but it's much more mellow. Um, this, this says I'm, and, and the funny thing is that, it doesn't drink like it's 120 anyway. But comparing the two, which are made from the same place, and they're both weeded, comparing the two, this one drinks softer than this one, and this one doesn't drink at 120. I put them at 110, 111, maybe something like that. I, they're just not drinking hot. Uh, some of them, some of the other ones that I've had have drank... It's happening. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up. Mm. It's good. It's not great. 
um, be great in, in uh, cocktails and things like that. Maybe I'll use it again soon. Um, all right, so tomorrow night is Cinco de Mayo. As I talked about, we're going to put out a recipe. It's, it's for my version of, well, actually, it's a friend of mine, his version of fideo. Fideo is a Mexican spaghetti. And I don't eat a lot of pasta. I, I avoid carbohydrates like the plague. But I love fideo. It is, it is a chicken-based dish. And it's got all the Mexican spices in it. And it's fantastic. And I will share that recipe online at the Facebook page tomorrow. Excuse me. I'm going to make it for dinner tomorrow night. Excuse me. <laughs> and then tomorrow night for... Uh-oh. I am sweating. I told you I was sweating. I'm like sweating. I don't know why. It's, I, I'm in the basement. Why am I sweating? <laughs> okay. So. So. Uh, Fideo will be dinner. And I will post that that uh, recipe early. So that you have time to get the, the uh, ingredients that you want. So you can make it at home yourself. And celebrate Cinco de Mayo. For the drink, we've got a couple different things we're going to be doing. I have this new Don Julio. I have not opened it. The plastic is still on it. I'll open it before the burb cast tomorrow. I promise. This is their private cask. It is 42.7% alcohol, which is, what, a uh, 85-ish proof. So it's not going to be super heavy, but we're going to do this. And then we're going to do a couple of, um, since this is beautiful bourbon, we're going to do a couple of uh, cocktails that are tequila and bourbon-based. And because the dish I'm making is fideo, and it's a chicken-based dish, I'm going to be using the chicken cock bourbon as the secondary in the drinks. So we're making drinks tomorrow night. I'll be drinking this one and tasting it, and then we'll be making cocktails with the two of them. Now, you're thinking to yourself, uh, wait a minute. Tequila and bourbon? Uh, in a drink? Uh, uh, yes. I found two. And there's going to be another one I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do a tequila old-fashioned. So there's going to be a couple of drinks tomorrow night. I will probably sweat again, <laughs> and I will probably slur again, uh, but we're going to be doing that. I found a couple of great drinks that are, that are bourbon and tequila related, and I'm looking forward to trying them. Um, and then, of course, the tequila old-fashioned, so we'll be doing that. And here's the cool part about that. Instead of the normal simple syrup, I'm going to be using agave for the simple syrup. Should be really good. All right, so that's going on tomorrow night. Uh, I, yeah, so I'm not missing anything. Good to go. Sweetness. Thank you for watching. Sorry I went so long. Didn't realize I was uh, that verbose. Look it up. <laughs> you don't have to. I now have to get the shower curtain back up to my son's shower. And I have to bid you adieu so I can go somewhere and apply a cold compress and uh, maybe go to sleep. <laughs> so I will see you uh, tomorrow night for Cinco de Mayo. May the 4th be with you. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk at you soon.